remember Zerka. Well, first of all, Zerka, right? Zerka Moreno, Moreno's wife. I didn't, she was the most nondescript looking person compared with the goddess I think I expected. She had one arm, which I didn't notice until I trained with her because she's so expressive. And out of this woman, this unassuming, humble woman came magic, wisdom, glory. She was incredible. And at the very end, she said with her one, one arm, um, okay, thank you. And you've been lovely and leave and do whatever you want. Then you have a good time. Next thing you do. And just, oh, wait. Now, every, any, you can walk out of the room anytime. Do something different. Fly out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I literally just remember picking up my books and flying <laughs> out of the room <laughs> without a thought. And I'm, you know, that was not... <laughs> <laughs> so that is my introduction to psychodrama. And I trained with Bob and Zerka, and I was... Where was that uh, when you met Zerka? Well, that's so beautiful because I trained in Manhattan with Bob. But then Omega Institute, Zerka used to do these uh, weekend things and so on at Omega, five days. I went to one. And I had this book, Drama Games, right? That I had already written before I ever found psychodrama. But then Zirka started talking about how Moreno never got attention. Are and you talking I talking about this, this? Yes, yes, that book. Uh, that book. Okay. I okay. had written that book for kids, for children who lost their theater money in the United States. Uh -huh. I taught creative dramatics and I was heartbroken that they they wouldn't have theater teachers anymore. So I took my Montessori training, which I'd also had, and broke everything down so that creative teachers could keep drama in their classrooms. And then I heard about Moreno feeling so sad. And because I fell in love with Zerka, I put I went back in the editing process of this book and added the word Jacob Moreno and psychodrama because I thought he doesn't get credit for everything. He should get credit. Mm -hmm. So I gave him credit in my own small way. And then um, I tried anyway. You, know, you could only edit so, add so many things at that stage. Well, so, actually, <clears throat> when I look at the, the preface, yes. just the first paragraph, yes. you start writing this growing up in alcoholic and dysfunctional homes we learned to numb our feelings because what went on around us did not make sense or was painful and confusing pulling us in all directions we learned it was better not to feel unfortunately when we turn off or numb out painful feelings we turn off good feelings as well. We become very adept at, at not experiencing our feelings, even pleased at have them under tight control. Within the context of a sick family, this was probably a wise survival choice. Later in life, however, we find our, brackets, souls are flat. That's from, you know, uh, I think that is from Edna St. Vincent Millay. All I could see from where I stood, you know. Anyway, um, they, no, I mean, not the words, but the expression, our souls are flat. Uh -huh. uh, that, I'm surprised I knew that much that long ago. I was, I think, 37 or something. 